a matter of great importance. LHC concerns and recent happenings. Ahari's mind production. The Large Hadron Collider has of late become the fascination of doomsayers, psychics, channelers and others like myself. While most among these people fear the LHC is a doomsday machine that could create a black hole, which would soon gobble up the Earth, a very few even think it's the birth of a consciousness. This video tries to examine the following. Why is the LHC feared and how did this fear come about? Are there any real concerns? What the author of this video thinks was behind the recent fault and subsequent shutdown of the LHC. Let's look at why the LHC is feared and how this fear came about. A cursory look at Google Trends, which discloses global internet search trends show some interesting patterns. It may have been due to the wide publicity, but the internet searches using end of the world and 2012 suddenly peaked on September 9th and 10th, the day the LHC was switched on, as shown here. This shows the extent of fear that the LHC has evoked in the collective consciousness of the people, with the generous help of the media and even the CERN scientists as well. In 2000, the wildly successful writer Dan Brown published his bestseller Angels and Demons. In the book, the CERN Collider is shown as producing dangerous antimatter, which was used by the Illuminati to threaten the Vatican. Although the CERN Collider routinely produces antimatter during their experiments, the quantity is far too small to pose any threat in reality. But this book had captured the imagination of the readers and may have contributed towards the fear surrounding the LHC. As pointed out by many in YouTube and elsewhere, there is a quadrain written by Nostradamus, which says, Leave, leave Geneva every last one of you. Saturn will be converted from gold to iron. The opposite rapos will exterminate all. Before the coming, the sky will show signs. They say, here Nostradamus makes a frightful prophecy of how the LHC would trigger a global disaster. He urges everyone to flee Geneva else rapos, which is interpreted as the positive ray, or the proton beam, will exterminate those who remain. The opposite rapos, could probably mean the two proton beams opposing each other at the point of collision in the LHC tunnel, or even the intense magnetic fields of the superconducting magnets that control and accelerate the proton beams. Saturn in the second line could be a reference to the tunnel, which is shaped like the ring of Saturn. Converted from gold to iron, may just mean that the tunnel is destroyed and its value reduced. The last line tells us that there will be signs in the sky before that. There is a lot of buzz, currently in the internet about the much-awaited first contact on October 14th. If this happens, could not this be interpreted as the signs in the sky, that is a precursor to this prophecy of disaster? Now, let's see if there really are any concerns. The CERN website that addresses the safety issues surrounding the LHC has listed some of the perceived risks as cosmic rays, microscopic black holes, strange matter, vacuum bubbles and magnetic monopoles. While their arguments are pretty convincing in dispelling any fears one may have about these dangers happening, I feel there are still some risks that the scientists have not addressed. For instance, they have not considered the risk of a dimensional portal, or a wormhole being created due to the intense magnetic fields of the extremely powerful superconducting magnets. The LHC has the most powerful magnets ever created. 1,600 of them, with most weighing over 27 tons. The Philadelphia Experiment, Project Rainbow, of 1943 resulted in the creation of one such artificial portal that went out of control, with disastrous consequences. The magnets of the Philadelphia experiment were much weaker than that of the LHC. Intense magnetic fields by themselves need not create a portal, but must be configured correctly. I initially doubted whether the LHC configuration was conducive for portal creation. The Philadelphia experiment, though of a much lesser magnetic strength than the LHC, was designed at a configuration that favored portal creation. But such portals are not a new occurrence. They can occur, naturally, in outer space, under the intense gravitational fields inside black holes, artificially, by extraterrestrial vehicles, usually using electromagnetic fields, and even, spiritually, by spiritual adepts and yogis. Spiritually generated portals, are not magnetic or gravitational in nature, 
and hence much less invasive. They are clean and precise portals, and far more efficient than these artificial devices. The essential difference between the spiritually generated portal and the magnetic one is that the spiritual portal originates at the higher dimension and comes into ours while the magnetic portal has its origins from our dimension and goes out to another dimension or another region of our space-time. Why the spiritual portal originates in the higher dimension is because the spiritual adept, whose satyasrara, or crown chakra is awakened and over which he has complete mastery, utilizes this chakra, which is the only part of us that is located at the higher dimension, to open the higher dimensional portal. He can use it to move either into the higher dimension, or use the higher dimension, as a conduit to another space-time location in our own dimension. In a sense, the crown chakra is a higher dimensional portal, and is very much our personal point of ascension. The chance of the LHC creating a dimensional portal, like Project Rainbow, is very much possible and if so, can have quite disastrous consequences since, the element of control is absent. It all depends on the design of the LHC. I was hoping the configuration of the LHC magnets was not favorable for portal creation when I learned of the massive fault that caused about 200 superconducting magnets in sectors 3 to 4, which lie just before the CMS quadrant, to fail due to a problem known as quench, in which the temperatures of these magnets rose dramatically. This has caused the LHC to be shut down until next year. Something tells me that this was no fortuitous coincidence, but a deliberate intervention by benevolent non-corporeal beings to save us from disaster that could have affected our planetary ascension. Although the scientists have attempted first to cover up and now to play down this fault as something quite expected, I don't think that is the case. Normally, before the commissioning of any engineering project that involves multiple systems to work in a coordinated manner, computer simulations in addition to a complex battery of tests are carried out to prove each component and each success of subsystem and their performance under different simulated conditions. This is to minimize the possibility of failure when the complete system goes live. It is far easier and cheaper to fix individual modules during testing than wait until the entire system is put together. So the scientist's explanation that such glitches are expected even after the system has been commissioned amidst worldwide publicity is hard to believe. I doubt whether they expected this and feel they are not sure why this happened and in such a major scale. If my hunch is correct, then why did these beings sabotage this experiment? Perhaps the configuration and power of the magnets were such that there was indeed a high risk of a situation like the Philadelphia experiment to happen. Only at a much larger scale, considering the larger power of the magnets. The beings may have been aware of this and had to intervene to prevent a disaster of unimaginable proportions that could have affected our planetary ascension in 2012. Unless and until the design, configuration, power of these magnets is altered to safer parameters, this intervention is bound to happen again. Once rectified, the LHC is unlikely to pose any further threat. But it remains to be seen how much the LHC will help us in understanding the nature of reality. On the usefulness of the LHC, I share the renowned scientists, Stephen Hawking's skepticism that the much-touted Higgs boson, or God particle, will not reveal itself in the detectors of the LHC. Moreover, the scientific quest for the most fundamental particle is essentially a futile exercise, since the universe is temporally and spatially a closed loop, or cyclical. One can go on digging deeper into the most fundamental constituents of matter, only to find the universe in all its grandeur looking back at us. Thus in every grain of sand, in every cell of our body, the entire universe is spread out. We will realize the relative sizes of things are themselves illusory and apply only to a limited scale. If this theory of intervention is true, we must be thankful to these beings for protecting us. I feel their intervention in terrestrial events that have the potential of impacting the ascension has increased lately. Although I am not a Christian, I think the symbolic language of the Bible contains many prophecies. The entire life of Christ is allegorical of humanity's timeline until the ascension. In that sense the LHC could be a metaphor of the crown of thorns that was placed on Jesus' head before his crucifixion.